Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'll be showing you 10 absolutely essential farms to build in your Minecraft worlds. Farms are kind of the backbone of any survival world. Without them, you're going to be hurting for supplies, resources, experience, food. And if you have the 10 farms I show you in today's video, then you'll be pretty set for just about everything you need and more. And you'll also be pretty rich to boot. So let's hop into it and if you're interested, tutorial links for all the farms in today's video are also down in the description that way you can go straight into building them one of the first farms that you'll want to build in your minecraft worlds is a food farm of some sort eating is absolutely essential to living if you don't do it then you stop living so a cow farm is a super easy one to get started early game you can get yourself a ton of baby cows and a lot of steak really quickly a simple cow farm like this one only takes a few minutes to build is extremely reliable and provides you with a ton of cows that you can either kill with looting and fire aspect or that you can automatically kill with some redstone. If you are more advanced in your world, then something like a villager powered crop farm might be even better because that can give you a ton of carrots or wheat that you can then turn into baked potatoes or bread. Villager powered crop farms are especially great because they are fully automatic and you don't really need to mess with them at all. So that gives you a lot more time to build other things and play the game without having to worry about starving to death. While not absolutely essential, an AFK Okay, fish farm is super handy early game because it can get you a lot of very very good loot a very very simple farm like this one can give you like 20 something different items and it barely takes any effort at all afk fish farms are also a great source of food early game as well because you can smelt down all these fishies they can give you better fishing rods than the ones that you're using they give you a great supply of amazing bows and of course some amazing enchantment books as well building an afk fish farm basically skips the entire early and mid game taking you straight to late game gear and getting you all of the enchantments that you need if you're willing to do a little bit of sorting and combining of items it might not be for everybody maybe you do want to actually play through the early and mid games but it's certainly handy to get that late game armor and weapons and tools that way you can focus more on building and doing things quickly a farm that absolutely every minecraft player should have is of course the iron farm iron farms are basically mandatory if you are playing minecraft there isn't really too many ways around it 1.18 of course makes iron a lot more common in the world however having an iron farm makes it so that you just don't need to mine for iron ever again and it's honestly really nice to not have to worry about that you can of course create infinite armor weapons and tools out of the iron you can make cauldrons for lava farms anvils for combining items buckets for lava farms rails and hopper mine carts including a ton of different redstone components as well iron is one of the resources that you're going to be using probably the most in this game because it is so necessary for a ton of different things so if you don't have an iron farm you're just going to be struggling having to go and do mining sessions all the time seriously get yourself an iron farm you just won't regret having the iron while you're messing with villagers getting yourself an iron farm you may as well go ahead and build yourself a villager training hall as well villager training really does unlock the end game these guys sell dozens upon dozens of different items and if you do it right you can have renewable diamond weapons armors and tool and you can also of course buy any enchantment book in the entire game from these librarians as well they are absolutely killer and they're totally great in every way except that they're an absolute pain to work with and i hate them <laughs> there's a lot of pros and cons to villagers the pros are you get infinite items the cons are you're gonna go insane if you do it right you can make it a lot easier on yourself by including some zombie villager curing and then that'll give these guys a permanent discounts so you can cure those guys they'll all go down to one emerald trades and then everyone else in the area also gets discounted prices as well which is really handy for saving you on emeralds making it so that you need to trade less to get more items by the way you can totally combine iron farms and trading halls into one and get a two for one combo that is absolutely stellar 
Experience is something that every Minecraft player needs as well for enchanting, combining items, and just flexing as well. And with the recent furnace bug for infinite experience being removed, may it rest in peace, you're gonna want yourself a decent experience farm. Spawner farms aren't really that good unless you can get like four mob spawners or more. A blaze spawner is pretty all right and a double blaze spawner is pretty decent. But if you wanna jump straight to the end game of experience farms, then a guardian farm is gonna serve you incredibly well. Not only is that gonna give you a new block palette of choices to build with, but it's also gonna give you a ton of fish for food. And of course it just floods you with experience. And it's also just kind of a cool build as well. Something everyone does is a ton of smelting, whether it be for glass, food, smooth stone, you name it, everybody smelts, and of course you're going to want yourself some form of furnace array, but more importantly you're going to want a fuel source to fill that up. Like a lava farm, lava farms are now possible in 1.18 and every single bucket of lava smelts a stack in 36 of items or 100 items. It's just a ton of stuff the buckets are renewable, so you can keep on reusing them over time. And honestly, lava farms are just pretty great all around. I would highly recommend them. There's a couple of very simple designs. You don't even need to automate it. If you just put down like 20 cauldrons somewhere in your base, that is gonna be more than enough lava over time to smelt the entire world. Probably the simplest farm in today's video is the tiny bone meal based sugarcane farm. Now these can only be built on a bedrock edition, but a simple farm like this one produces 18,000 sugarcane per hour, and that is more than enough for all of your rocket needs. And if it's not, well then you could just double it for 36,000 sugarcane per hour. How about that? Now of course a sugarcane is a fairly useless crop, but you do need it for rockets unfortunately. So if you have an elytra, then building a tiny sugarcane farm like this should definitely be on your priority list. That way you just like never need to worry about sugarcane. Watch out for pigs breaking your redstone though. Seriously, these things produce a ton of sugarcane, like a lot. You you won't need any other sugarcane farm. This is the only sugarcane farm that you need. It's like five blocks. Another very powerful farm that enables you to do a lot more in your Minecraft worlds is a bone meal farm. Currently, one of the best bone meal farms is a moss farm. A good moss farm produces way more bone meal than it consumes. As we can see on the back side over here, it has filled up the entire bone meal storage and now it's producing an excess as well. So you can use bone meal to do a thousand different things on the bedrock edition from powering your sugar cane, your bamboo, or your kelp farms to making automatic crop farms and dye farms there is a lot of uses for bone meal so definitely a good idea to have it in mass another seemingly mandatory farm to have in your minecraft world is a general hostile mob farm these things will give you creepers spiders skeletons zombies witches and tons of other things as well it'll give you all the gunpowder that you need for rockets and tnt all the string that you need for wool and dispensers all the bones that you need for bone meal and a bunch of other spare items as well a good hostile mob farm also gives you experience too so this is kind of like a three and one premium combo maybe not necessary but definitely nice to have is a tree farm wood is one of the most common building blocks in the entire game you'll need it a ton for different crafting recipes all across the entire game and in general it's just a super duper nice thing to have if you have a bone mill supply and an iron farm building a tree farm isn't really too big of a hassle either so you may as well go ahead and get one of these things and then you never need to worry about wood ever again as of 1.17, we also have completely playerless tree farms using Azalea as well. As you can see, it fully grows a tree and then takes it away and puts it into storage for you completely playerlessly. You can go off and do whatever you want, and then the cube maker is going to fill up of uh, blocks, and that's all there is to it. You come through here, and you break all these, and it's just a free wood farm. What more can you ask for? And if you got a bone meal farm, then it truly is free. A good azalea tree farm also works for the other tree types as well, so there's no need to build multiple tree farms. Build one, and then you can farm basically everything. And you thought I was gonna forget the most mandatory, the most necessary, the most crucial farm of all, the pig out piston door. Every single Minecraft world needs to have one of these. I mean, look how adorable it is. His eyes shoot out when you open it. I mean, that's just peak adorableness right there. And then it closes back up and you got a pico. 
It's adorable. Go build it. Another honorary mention is raid farms. They're not critical to a Minecraft world, but the Totems of Undying are extremely nice to have because then you just never have to worry about dying. The Emeralds and the Hero of the Village Effect are also very good for your villager trading halls, so there are a lot of reasons to build them. Are there any farms that you think I forgot to mention in today's video? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm curious to see what farms you think are critical to a world's survival. And otherwise, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, then of course, a drop a like as it helps out the video on the channel a ton. If you're new here, then maybe consider subscribing to help us reach 500,000. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.